Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Emi Chicken from Team Pandori. We got a box. What kind of box? A Pandora's box. Indiana Jones moment. Da, 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 da. Oh my eyes! It's bright green. That's pretty. That's very pretty. Here's the manual for a DX. Um, re really, guys? Re really? You don't? Boy! Now to get dirty. Let's take a top off. Nice. That's the same heatsink as the early Pandora X we had. Pretty much identical. The only differences are these headers. Here and here. The first thing we do with any of these boards is to get this micro SD out. Then make a backup on our PC. Let's have a look what we have. Kioxia, which is a spin-off company from Toshiba. Under the block, there's a CPU, two RAM chips, and a NAND. We'll just take off the heatsink now, squeeze the nips. It's an S905X2. On the heatsink, they're using a thermal pad rather than adhesive, so it's quite easy to pull off. The specs, we have a 905X2, which is pretty decent, and apparently they've raised the speed to two gigahertz. Looking at these numbers, we should have better performance than a Super Console X Pro. Replacing an old Pandora box is fairly simple. Take out your family board, then replace. The only thing you need to worry about are the holes at the back of your bar top. Line up the holes at the back, then screw her in. Engage the sticks. Insert the cable for the control harness. On the right, there may be a jumper pin. Just remove it and insert the cable for the switch. Then the speaker. And you should be done. Compared to other Pandora boxes, this one takes number one for loading times. It takes 48 seconds to get to the game's menu. Let's keep farting. We're greeted to a games list with a preview video on the right. There's 3,300 games, mostly arcade, with sprinkles of PSP. The list goes on and on and on. If we push start, we can get to the search menu, search by title or filter out the games. The setting screen here. Oh, setting, setting menu. Setting. Yeah, setting. Yeah, setting. What you talking about? IO test, we can test our buttons on the harness. Change the button layout. Arcade button mapping is for the harness and then for the USB controllers. Sad to see, no configuration per system. The menu is pretty much copy and paste from a DX. Remember to turn auto exit to off. We've got two options here for video. With them both off, the games look like this. With quality optimization on, it adds a paint-like filter. If we turn the scanning line on, it adds scan lines. Sorry, 3A's version of scan lines. They're pretty bad. Want better scan lines? Maybe check out the scan line generator that we had on earlier. We can turn them both on, and it looks like bath. At the bottom, we can assign our USB inputs to be player 1, 2, 3, or 4. Change game settings. Difficulty, hiding games, and creating a favorite list. Bookkeeping. Don't know, don't care. Intro movie. Built-in speaker. Languages are in English, Korean, and Spanish. Bonjour, no. Surprisingly, no Chinese or French. To change display resolution, when your box is off, hold in the settings button and turn it on. Until it loads up, keep the button held down, then I'll switch the resolution. Two on the box, 1080p and 720p. If you're on VGA, stay at 720p. Playing retro games, there's not much difference, 
And if you play more demanding titles, you may get a better frame rate. First thing to do is map the buttons. A, B, C, D, E, F, start. If you need to use a USB controller, these cheap PlayStation 3 pads work fine. The only other controller I got working was the 8-bit DO SM30 with this brown 8-bit DO USB dongle. I tried out many different pads, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and all of these did not work. If you intended on using USB encoders, this cheapy works, but you could not reconfigure it in the menu. This one just doesn't work at all. I tried using the Pandora box as a USB controller. First, a Windows 10 PC, and then a PlayStation 3. Unfortunately, I had no luck with either. First up, Wonder Boy. Screen tearing is completely gone. This is a first for 3A. It's a shame we cannot control the aspect ratio. Same thing with Shinobi. Donkey Kong. For the vertical games, we've got a good aspect ratio on a 16-9 screen. We have samples. It'd be nice if we could rotate the screen. Everyone needs a bit of Tate. Tate. Oh, grey. Hot. 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 Same for Super Zaxxon. NBA Jam on ice. It's running faster than a DX would, but scrolling is a bit jerky. Mortal Kombat. Street Fighter 3, third strike. Killer Instinct, Super Nintendo. Buttons are a mess. We'll change these before we play. Killer Instinct Gold, N64. Controls, again, are all over the place. Frame rate is a bit here and there. It's quite a difficult game to run, so it's expected. Mario Kart 64. Not using the most accurate emulator, 
Okay, the video screen's missing. God damn it. Street Fighter X, PlayStation. Controls for this game are pre-configured out the box. In Tekken 2, the controls are a mess. This is getting very old, and 3A needs to pull the finger out. Tekken 5. Round one. Fight. Speed seems to be not too bad, but wait. Wait. Uh, here we go again. What? Okay, so the reason why I can't even get into this is because they've bound X to L1. Of all the buttons. Okay, let's reconfigure this. <laughs> Press the wrong button one more time. Mm. The thing you need to realize is we need to do this for every PlayStation Portable game. Every PlayStation 1 game. Super Nintendo games. It's a bit of a faff. It'd be great to see this on a video out in the Jammer Edge, but due to aspect ratio, PSP games would be very thin. We also checked that you could play Tekken 5 to the end, which you can. Sweet. Monster Hunter 2. It's in English. Sega Rally Revo. Some Virtua Tennis. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Here we go again. Runs fairly well with no graphical glitches. To keep controller settings, we can either save state or even use the memory card function. For up to four player games, we'll have to attach two more USB pads, then configure them. And these pads will act as player three and four, while those attached to the control harness which is the sticks and the buttons, will work as players 1 and 2. So we'll need to go down here to gamepad setting and change the control pads to players 3 and 4. Then you're good to go. Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Captain Crunch. Battletoads. Sunset Riders. Hit the ice. And X-Men. Intend on using an arcade panel. You'd need to use the control harness again. Attach all the sticks and the buttons. 
Smash it in, and you're on the cabinet. If you want to be a bit more experimental, you could do something like this. This is one box shared between two machines. So what I've done here is used a HDMI splitter, sending both a video and sound signal to not just this monitor here, but to the other cabinet on the right. We've used a USB hub, and that is plugged up to two USB encoders in this panel. These boards convert all buttons and switches into a USB controller. We can use these as players 3 and 4 like we did earlier. Could even have two single player cabinets for 1v1 action. We tried the arcade trackball and we're left with a pointer on the screen. Centipede is playable, but the mouse pointer is very distracting, input is very slow, and it just doesn't work out the box very well. Let's check the micro SD where all the games are. We have 7 gigabytes free. The games are in the ROMs folder here. At the top we can see the Marvel vs Capcom 2 files, the bins and the GDI, and the two N64 games. The only way of adding any Dreamcast or N64 game is to switch out these files. FBA 2012 is for Final Burn Alpha, FC is for your Nintendo games, MAME 2003 is for MAME 0.78, Mega Drive, PlayStation, PSP, and SFC for Super Nintendo. To add more games to the system, simply copy over the games files into these folders. For MAME, it recognizes the 0.78 zips, NVRAM, as well as CFG files for game configurations. For any arcade games, do not extract or rename the zip files. We'll just add some Mega Drive games here. And now PlayStation. These PBP files are actually compressed PlayStation disk images. These are supported as well as IMG and a host of others. For the PSP, you can use regular ISO files, then copy and paste them in. As the PlayStation games can get rather large, it may be a good idea to create some disk space. As I mentioned earlier, PBP files are slightly compressed images. We could copy this file over and rename it to .bin and would save some space. We could also remove games that we don't need. ISS Pro is a game I'd never play. So what we're going to do is make a placeholder for it, create a text file, go to rename, select the entire file name, Right click, copy, remove this file, right click, delete, yes, then go to new text documents, go to rename, select it all, and then paste. You can do that for all the games you'd never use. Once you've finished here, you can go to the Pandora box menu, then hide all of the games from the list. There's another trick we can use which will save a lot of space. Tekken 5 here is huge. We can compress it to CSO by using this tool here. Simply drag and drop to the main window. In Explorer, we're going to copy the address of the ROMs folder, then paste it in here. Now we press the play button. And wait. Engage the tricks. Once we're done, we'll have a CSO file, and this one's trimmed 500 megabytes off the original ISO. Like we did before, copy the name, remove it, and then rename the CSO file as an ISO. You can do this with as many ROMs as you want to save gigabytes of disk space. Removing the games, like we did the PlayStation, is also an option. To the pros and cons. It's green! It's nice to see that 3A have fixed their screen tearing issues, but it should have been that way all along. Now for the cons. Let's face it, 
The software blows. A refocus on arcade games is in order, as this chip is capable. In fact, I'd say that the only audience that would benefit from this box would be the arcade one-up users. As their screen is at 4-3 aspect ratio, many of the older arcade games would look great on it. Vertical games didn't look too bad, whereas PSP games like Tekken 6 would just look plain stupid. While the hardware is a big step up from the DX, the software is from the dark ages. Now that we've hacked this box, we can actually fix many of the issues of the DX. Add aspect ratio, making older games play even better than the EX. The only real advantage of this new box is PSP and Marvel vs Capcom 2. Subpar. Mediocre. Official. 3A. At the end of the day, 3A have lost the way. If you do want a Pandora's box, we suggest you go for the Pandora Saga 4188 or the Pandora Saga X 6000 or 8000. And of course, use Pandori. Before we leave, we just want to say thank you to all of these lovely people on our Patreon. All of the proceeds go straight back into the Pandori project, and thanks to you, we can keep moving and grooving. We'd also like to thank Leon Arcade. They sent us this board before release, were very friendly, and expected us to give this box a very positive review. Um, oops. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, please like, subscribe, and do all the bits. Um, bye. May the force be with you.